Hello again, this is a tutorial for an app called BoxFill. Now the first thing you do when you load up BoxFill or that you're going to want to do is go right to settings, which is the little wrench down here in the bottom right. You're going to want to click that and you're going to want to make sure you're on the right code version so your results are what you expect. Um, we support right now the latest CEC and the latest NEC, which is Canada of course and the United States. So we're going to put it over onto NEC right now, and you'll see when we go back, the screen will change to reflect the NEC rules. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the first thing to notice is the bottom bar. The bottom bar is where you will control your boxes. This bar you can ignore if you're just doing a single box fill calculation here and there. Um, but if you are going to do multiple box calculations, you're going to want this bar is going to allow you to add boxes to your list, to uh, maintain your list, and to delete boxes. So we'll go through that later. First, we'll go through a single box calculation. So the first thing you want to do is pick your box. So to do that, you just click on the picture of the box. And you can select a uh, predetermined box here. So let's go ahead and go with a square 4 by inch and a quarter. Now if you have a custom box, you can also click on the volume and you can enter any volume you want. Um, to calculate a, uh, a volume such as that, you have your calculator up here in the top right, which you can use to do a quick calculation. So if you wanted to do a 6 inch by a 6 inch by 4 inch box, you can calculate that up here get your volume of 144 cubic inches and then you can enter that down here. Um, now while we're at it to change your units you can go up to the menu and hit change units in the menu and that'll go to cubic inch. So given those given those things you can put in any size box you want but for the most part you'll probably be using predetermined boxes so let's go back to that. Now once you have your box, you can either use it as a single box or you can put multiple gangs here. This can be handy for extension rings or if you go to a device box, um, you might want to do a three gang device box. Now you'll see your volume of a single box and you'll also see your volume, your number of uh, gangs and then your total volume. All calculations are always uh, determined by this total volume. Now another way to, to do your box is you can lock and compound a box. So we could go to a square box for example, we could go to a single gang, and then if we wanted to add a bigger extension ring we can lock this value here, the 18, so now it's locked because the little lock is locked, and we can go to another box, so let's say we want to add a deep extension ring, and now we can just hit the plus button, and that'll add that 30.3 cubic inch box onto the one we already have. And you can keep doing that to compound a box. And then um, later on when you want to go back to normal boxes, you just hit your lock again to unlock it. And that'll just do whatever box is selected. So that's how you select your box. There's also a help up here, the little eye, which will tell you everything you just watched on the video. So let's keep with that for now. Now you add your fillers. So in the filler section, you will see that there the all the wire sizes are here. So if you want to, if you have uh, three number twelves coming into your box, you can select this and put three. Another option you can do is you can fill the box with all the little fill box buttons. So if you if you know if you just want to see how many number twelves you can put in that box, you can hit fill box, and it will automatically fill your box with number twelve wire. So let's put that back to zero. Now that'll still work if you have other stuff in your box and you hit the fill box. It'll still fill it with that wire, but keep your other fillers in there. Um, next is your devices. Uh, the devices are based on the largest wire wired to the device. So if you have a receptacle with number 12 wire on it, you will add a 1 here. If you have a larger receptacle, say a 30 amp receptacle or something for uh, a dryer or a heater or whatever, you'll add that here. Uh, now you'll see if I go fill box with number 12s, it'll only go to 9 because you already have fillers in there. But anyway. Uh, fixture stud or hickey, if you have um, a fixture stud or any kind of hickey in the box that you're mounting a light to or a fixture to, you can add that in. 
If you have internal cable clamps in the box, you're going to want to turn this switch on. That'll add fill as well. And other is a spot where you can put um, devices that don't fall into any of the other categories. Uh, maybe a dimmer, motor control, timer, something like that. And that box you can just type in. So you can type in your 100 cubic inch or whatever you want. At that point, once you have all your filters in, this also has a help. Um, and that's actually a vague help because the filler section, if you click on any of the icons, you'll get detailed help based on that section, as well as uh, code-related rules. And you can look up uh, the code for that. Now, once you have all that typed in, you can go to your results, and it'll show you in your big number, just for a quick look, you can see how full the box is. So this is 41.2% full right now. Uh, it'll also turn red as soon as you overfill it. As you can see here. And then if you want more detail, you can go over to these sections. It'll show your uh, filled cubic inch, or uh, if you change your units, it'll be in uh, cubic centimeters, and how much is remaining in the box, and your filled percentage, and your remaining percentage. And again, there's a help to explain all that in here. Uh, okay, so now we'll go to this bottom bar. So we just did a, a calculation for what we called box one. Now maybe we want to add another box. We can hit the plus button. It'll add a box and tell us that it added it. And now we have two boxes. To select these boxes, we hit the uh, hamburger button here. And we can go between our two boxes. So let's go to our new box, box two. Uh, you might want to rename it. Just click on the thing, the uh, thing, the text field. And you can name whatever you want, maybe a uh, box, I don't know, whatever, above, kitchen, ceiling. Whatever you want. And, of course, then they'll stay named in the box list, of course. If you want to delete a box, say we don't need this box one anymore, we can hit the trash can. It'll give us a warning, and we'll delete it. You can't delete the final box. You always need to have at least one box in. If you try to delete it, it'll give you a little warning telling you you can't delete it. And that's about it. So you can do as many boxes as you want. Uh, you can add to that list, and they'll all be independent. Uh, and each screen, obviously, um, shows the box that's selected. Now, once you have a list of boxes and a bunch of calculations done, there's a lot of things you can do from the menu. Um, email will email the selected... Actually, no, it emails the entire list of your boxes in uh, like an email format. You can email a CSV. What this does is it puts it in a comma separated value file that you can open in a spreadsheet, which will show all your box calculations. And you can also email as a PDF. Uh, all that does is it emails the screen you're looking at. So it'll email the selected box screen as a PDF. Um, you can print. That does the same thing. It'll just print the exact screen you're looking at. Uh, help will take you to our website, so you can email us. And the video tutorial will take you to this video tutorial. And reset, of course, will reset the entire app back to factory defaults. Um, the only other thing to be aware of is settings, which is under your wrench. Code version we already went over. Calculator has a bunch of settings. Uh, pretty straightforward. Inch precision. Uh, a lot of people keep that on the 16th. That will keep it uh, so your measuring tape will be able to follow uh, the calculator results. So there will be no 64ths in the results. Uh, decimal precision is pretty straightforward. Lock denominator will lock the denominator on sixteenths, so it won't reduce it to quarters or halves. It'll always be in sixteenths. Include yards will uh, show yards and feet in a result on the calculator. If this is off, it'll just show feet. Uh, button sound is the bu button pressing sound in the calculator. Uh, and then the last part is the spreadsheet export. When you're, when you're exporting uh, as a CSV, this will let you either put the boxes in a vertical orientation or a horizontal orientation. This can come in real handy uh, for different styles of printers. And include headings will allow you to um, either include or exclude the headings of the columns. Um, if you want to make your own headings, sometimes it's good to uh, keep that off so it doesn't include them. And that's about it. Um, this app will also run on your iPhone and iPod as a single uh, purchase. It's a universal app. So enjoy.